So, hello there. For a couple of days now, I've been trying to get down or to nail the sound of the infamous Polymog 280A Voxuman preset, uh, made famous, of course, by the great Gary Newman. Um, as you probably could tell by me playing those melodies in the intro. And I think I've gotten very close. Uh, I'm going to pat myself on the back here and say that I've done a pretty good job of doing this. It's taken me quite a few days of work uh, going back and forth with a couple of uh, sources that I got uh, to try to nail the sound, but yeah, I think, I think I've done a good job. Um, that being said, uh, I'm going to show you guys how I created the patch. Actually, I have the patch right here, as you can tell, and there's a lot of nuances to it that I don't think I could recreate on the fly now, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the this curse while um, editing part and we're gonna gut the patch apart we're gonna reverse engineer it and see what we can do to learn how to recreate it once again so let's dive in so first we're gonna go into this edit section here we're gonna go into vast and to put it very simply and I'm gonna lay out the requirements for you right now is you're going to need a synthesizer with two oscillators which can be detuned from each other independently. You're gonna need a, an, an oscillator that can spit out uh, pulse width modulation, meaning that is square width with its the width of the pulse, which can be modulated. You're going to need a low pass filter, and this is the juicy part, three LFOs. Yes, three LFOs, because we're going to modulate three individual things separately. So. First, we're going to start out with the sawtooth wave. Um, reminder, the polymog only has two sound sources. That is a sawtooth wave and a square wave with an adjustable pulse. So right here, we're going to take a look at, you can see up here, it says layer one. Also, please um, do not mind these dead pixels on my screen. Um, layer one is the saw sawtooth wave. We can hear here the the full sound. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the square wave and we're gonna lower the volume entirely. So that is minus 15 dB. Uh -huh. Before I forget, allow me to write that down because we will need to get that sound back up again. Um, all right. So, let's lower that volume all the way down. So now effectively layer 2 is muted. Let's hear how it sounds only with the sawtooth wave. It's a rather flimsy sound, but it's one of the building blocks of the preset. So let's see what's going on here. We're going to go to a DSP mod. Um, again, you can do this in any type of synthesizer. I'm going to give you the velocity, the, the speed of the LFOs and everything, so don't worry about that. Um, we're going to go here, and you will see in the, in the sorry, sawtooth wave pitch up here that I'm modulating it through an LFO. So if we go over to the LFO section, you'll see right here LFO1 is moving at 5 hertz, and the shape is a sine wave. I use a sine wave, however, the waveforms, the LFO waveforms in this synthesizer are kind of wonky, so a triangle wave doesn't sound exactly like a triangle wave, it's kind of weird, but I decided to use a sine because it's the best option I had. So, sine wave and LFO1, which is the one modulating the, the pitch, sorry, of sawtooth wave is set at 5 hertz, so Remember that. Uh, we're going to go back to the DSC mod section. And I, s I have the depth of it set to 40 um, cents. Just, just listening to how much I'm modulating. That's the, the speed of the sawtooth wave. So take note of that and try to emulate as best as you can. Again. Again. 
You don't want to overdo it, otherwise the sound is going to be too muddy and it's really not going to sound that close to the polymoke. So, that is it really for the sawtooth wave. I mean, there's not much else to say about this. Um, it's a relatively simple patch, just the modulation is the most difficult part about it. I'm going to set this to 24 dB so I can remember that. And again, we're going to lower the, the volume of the sawtooth wave. We're going to move over to the square wave. This is where it gets interesting. Now, I said that this was a minus 15 dB, so that's where it is. Let's listen to the square wave. So right there, we have two different types of modulations going at the same time, and that's why we needed two LFOs. Uh, sorry, three LFOs. So. Let's take a look at the DSP mod section right here. We're going to go first to the pulse width modulation pitch. That is a square wave pitch. And again, we are also modulating it with an LFO. As you could tell, the LFO rate of the square wave is slower than the sawtooth wave. So if we go to the LFO section, LFO 1 is modulating the pitch. LFO 2, we're going to get into later. LFO 1 is at 3.1 hertz, <laughs> um, as long as it's relatively slower than the square wave, it should do, but if you want the exact number, it's 3.1 hertz. Again, all the shape are signs. The shapes are signs. Um, and there's not a lot of, it's actually the depth of the modulation is lower than in the sawtooth wave. It's not as aggressive. I'm going to take away the modulation of the pulse width, so you can clearly hear the modulation of the square wave. So that is the speed of the LFO modulating the square wave. And now we move over to the pulse width. So we're going to increase this. I think it was around 20 something. Yeah, around there. And the, the LFO, LFO2 is now modulating the speed of the pulse width, the pulse width modulation that is moving. Um, yeah, the parameter. And you can see right here, it's 0.20 hertz so it's incredibly slow so you have sawtooth wave moving at a fast speed um square wave pitch moving at a slower pace and the pulse width modulation is moving at a glacier pace it's much slower and the conjunction of, of the movement of all of these three parameters clashing moving in and out of phase, you know, the, those frequencies clashing is what creates the rich sound of the Vox Humana preset. So that's it. I mean, that's the modulation part. There is nothing else too crazy about this patch. You can see right here, I have the amp envelope and that's the shape. It has a relatively um, sharp attack. It's kind of soft, but sharp. Is that what they call an oxymoron? Soft, but sharp. It has a long release. The polymer poly has some long releases and makes those long chords sound amazing. So, we're going to go over to the DSP control of the sawtooth wave. We're going to bring back that oscillator. It is, this one was at around minus 24 dB. And. <laughs> That's it. Another thing to keep in, in consideration, which I have included here, um, both of these layers are being run through a low pass filter. What this means is that the high frequencies are being the yeah, the high frequencies are being cut off. And you don't want to overdo this. The only reason why I included it is because I wanted to darken the low register of the synthesizer. You can hear I'm gonna play high up in the register here. 
I'm going to play in the low register. So it's much darker. And that's kind of the character that the polymog also has originally. So again, you want to bring back the frequency cutoff and turn up a bit the keyboard tracking, but not too much. You don't want the sound to be too pronounced. The low end is not completely muffled in the original synthesizer. That's it. There is nothing else to dispatch other than that. And personally, I, I took the liberty to add two sound effects here. As you can tell, I have a reverb and some phaser. It adds a really nice character to it, especially the, the reverb. Okay, enough Gary Newman. <laughs> I love this guy. And the face are just, it's incredible. said enough Gary Newman. Look at me, I, I, it j just pulls it out of me, the Polymog. It's just an incredible instrument and this patch is amazingly beautiful. So that's it. There is not much else to say about this patch. It's again relatively simple. Any synthesizer that gives you two oscillators. Oof. <laughs> How could I forget? Oh my god, I almost overlooked this. But it's a minor detail and we're gonna look into it right now. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's kind of nervous recording this video, so I completely forgot about this. The sawtooth wave is slightly detuned against the square wave. We're going to look right here at this sawtooth pitch. I have it set to minus one hertz. How could I forget about this? Oh my god. So let's take a listen at how it sounds perfectly in tune with the square wave and how it sounds with minus one hertz. So. We are in perfect tune right there. It doesn't sound bad, but listen how it begins to sound when I move it, move the frequency a bit flat. Those chords just get so much bigger. There's a, a hollowness and a lot of phasing to the sound of the polymog. So that's, again, why you need two separate oscillators and you want that frequency a, a bit flat. I found that it, um, if you move it flat, it sounds better than if you move it sharp. Not exactly sure why, but again, um, these experiments I've been running to try to get this sound as close as I can get. So that's it. That's the polymog Vox Humana preset. You can recreate this on any Curtis Watt synthesizer, or if you have a, a virtual synthesizer that has any sort of amount of LFOs or whatever, or any sort of other digital synthesizer, really. It just requires those, um, those oscillators, low pass filter, and those three LFOs. So yeah, have fun, and I hope this helped. <laughs>